Hey guys, what's up? It's Alex over at Laser Everything and today we're going to be tackling a really unique object. It's an urn. I know it's not the most pleasant thing, but we're going to be able to really help somebody out today. We're going to give them something beautiful that they can, you know, feel really good about uh, having their loved ones in. Uh, and we get to practice working on some weird stuff. So. Hang out if you want to learn how to engrave urns. We're going to be working with the fiber laser today. And uh, that's enough chatting. Let's get right into it. Before you ask, uh, no, there's nobody in this. It is an empty urn, uh, which gives us a little more leeway to, uh, you know, manipulate this thing without having to worry about what's going on with it. going to be a challenge. I'm kicking the camera like some kind of animal. No worries, I have to move you guys anyway. So here we go guys, this is what I wanted to show you. Uh, the customer has requested that the engraving go right here underneath this black line. Uh, I think we can move this up just a notch or two just to give this a little more lift on the back end, uh, but otherwise um, the area that we're engraving in is looking pretty level. Uh, I can't do anything about this curve and we're gonna talk about that in a minute, um, but we have ways to deal with that. So uh, from here, we're just gonna go ahead and make those quick adjustments and then get things straightened out. So we've got our box here now and we're just gonna give this a quick turn and get this oriented appropriately. So since we're dealing with a curved object uh, and we're, we're curving here, our flat rectangle isn't going to curve nicely uh, around this edge. So there is a trick to getting this nice and level with the existing lines. Uh, what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that the corners are touching, okay? Uh, one part of this is always going to bow out uh, and it can either be the center, which bows up into the edge uh, and the, the corners will be way up here uh, and up here, or we can have the uh, flat edge bow under the line and have our corners touching. Now, both of our corners are touching, then we know that our box is straight. Uh, it doesn't quite get a center, and we're gonna have to uh, eyeball that. We could do a fairly long line straight up and down here, and I may even add that in so you can take a look at it, just to give us a better idea of whether or not things are straight. Uh, up and down, but as far as being level with the existing lines, all we want to do is look for these corners right here, and we want to make sure that those corners are right on the edge of that black. I'm using the white here just to show you where they're falling, and it's right on the corner. So uh, we've got two corners uh, there and there, and those are looking nice and straight with the line so we can move on. I've added the line in, and we're looking straight down this urn, and that line is mostly cutting the urn in half, I think close enough for what we are trying to do today. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and call that good. Uh, we're just going to focus real quick, and then we will jump into EasyCAD and start uh, preparing our artwork. All right, guys, so here we are in EasyCAD. I've gone ahead and removed that vertical line, so we don't need to worry about that. Um, we'll go ahead and paste in our artwork and we know that the corners of our outline box here are starting right at the top of the line so we actually want this to start a little bit below we don't want it right on the line there uh, so we're going to start that right about here uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to uh, expand this box just down to the bottom of our artwork there and we can bring this down now because we know that we're straight and we'll cut our artwork again and we're gonna light this box just to make sure that everything looks level within the bounds of this box before we, uh, before we continue. So the main thing we wanna check again is just to make sure that our distance between our corners here and the line is about the same on both sides and that looks pretty good. It's about the width of one of our focal sticks uh, on both sides there. So that looks nice. So we haven't lost our, uh, our, our evenness on that. The other thing we want to do is just judge our curve here. So if I get down and we get the phone level, if I can get it to stay focused here, um, that looks like an acceptable amount 
of play in the focus. Uh, so, so if we take something straight here and we just lay it flat, we can see how much focus we're losing. It's not science, uh, it's not scientific, but it's gonna get us really close. And I think that we can spare to lose that much focus, that little gap right there, uh, that should be fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and say yes. We could just hike the back end of this up just a little bit more if we wanted to, but I'm gonna go ahead and run it as is. I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, so we can go ahead and stop lighting. Uh, we'll paste our artwork back in. We can get rid of our outline box. We don't need it anymore. And we'll go ahead and just throw a basic hatch on this. Uh, the customer described this urn as pewter, but I don't believe them. I think it's some kind of steel. Either way, just to be safe, we're gonna go ahead and set our standard hatch pattern uh, here. And uh, of course, Easy Cat is locking up. So we'll set our standard hatch pattern here on both hatches. We'll keep our normal 45 degree and negative 45 degree hatches. Uh, and we're gonna uncheck this. And what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna start at brass. Uh, when you're laser engraving with a fiber laser, you can always add uh, power, right? We can always engrave more, uh, but we can't put any back. Uh, so we want to start light and then get heavier as we go uh, with our with our power usage here. The brass is only 50% power. It's a nice speedy mark uh, at 1524. Um, so the brass general is going to do really well for us just to find out what this material is. And once we mark this, we'll be better informed on how to proceed. So uh, we're going to go ahead and run this right now. You can hear and see that it did get quite light over here uh, on the edges and that means that we're a little far away on our focus so what i'm going to do is a live focus and live focusing is dangerous and you should only do it if you think the discrepancy in uh, focal distance is small i do in this case so what i'm going to do is i'm going to mark it again with the same mark and we're just going to lower the focus just a little bit live while we're engraving it to see if we can get the whole thing in one shot So we've learned a couple things. Um, first of all, this is brass. So it's not pewter or steel. Uh, that makes things better and harder. Uh, with brass, it's pretty easy to get this whole mark uh, nice and uniform. And we're gonna do that with steel white finish. Uh, but we still have to worry about this area right here. So we're gonna hop over to EasyCAD real quick to deal with that. Uh, first thing we're gonna do is ungroup our hatch and then we're gonna delete this top group here. And that's gonna remove our hatch from uh, the rest of the work. Our problem areas are pretty easy to identify. We have an issue with the B, we have an issue with the N, and we have an issue with the K. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, grab all of that right there. We don't want to get the uh, the N in that there. So uh, there we go. We'll just grab all that. We're going to regroup that part, hatch it, and hit OK. And we're going to finish this part first. Uh, so I'm going to just cut this out really quick. We're going to group the rest of this and hatch that too so that we can grab it all at once. We'll paste our main body, the good stuff, back in uh, and we'll remove the problem areas. We wanna finish this part of the engraving first. Uh, so now that we know that we're working with brass, we can go ahead and give it a few more passes of the brass general, probably like five should be good. Uh, and then we'll follow that up with a white finish. And then once all of this is done, we'll get rid of this and we'll paste our problem areas in and we'll deal with that. Uh, so let's go ahead and take care of this really quick. With the main body of the text done here, we're just gonna hit this with a steel white finish and I'm gonna show you why. So if you had talked to me four years ago, I would be freaking out right now uh, about this situation over here, um, but I'm cool and collected today and here's why. Steel white finish affects brass pretty much the same regardless of how in focus or out of focus you are you if you recall earlier in the video these middle sections were much darker 
than the ones on the outside here. But once we hit it with steel white finish, the whole thing becomes evened out. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump into EasyCAD and paste our problem areas back in now that our center section is done. And we're going to just lower the focus enough just to get a base mark on this. Uh, hopefully we won't get any ghosting or double lines, but we should be okay. And once that's done, it doesn't matter what that mark looks like because the steel white finish is gonna treat it the same. So let's go ahead and do the swap out in EasyCAD and then we will uh, see how that works out for us. So with that done, we will paste in our problem areas. We will delete our good stuff that is all but complete. Uh, and we're gonna switch our pass here back to the brass general. Um, in fact, you know what? So what we're gonna do instead is we're actually gonna use anodized aluminum. Um, the anodized aluminum setting throws a little bit more power down range at a slightly slower speed, which means we should get a more effective mark uh, without being quite as in focus as it took for the brass general. And this will be a good solution for us here. So um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna run this as is first without changing the focus. Uh, and if we need to, then we'll adjust the focus down. But let's try this first because this might save us work and keep us from ghosting the image. So we've got our aluminum setting all set up and uh, we're ready to try this out. So with the aluminum setting, again, we're gonna get a little more power down range. So let's see if that has an effect before we start refocusing. Okay, so you guys can see that did some work for us. Uh, we didn't even have to refocus, but we're still missing a little bit of that K and that N over there. Uh, so what we're gonna do is just drop our focus a little tiny bit, uh, just a little bit more, just enough to get that K in there. And we're gonna run this one more time. And that's starting to look really good. So. What we can do from here is run the steel white finish and see if that cleans it up and evens things out across the entire engraving. So if we get closer here, we can see we've effectively dealt with the B and the N, uh, but what we need to deal with is this K, this final K right here. And that means jumping into EasyCAD one more time uh, to go ahead and solve uh, this problem. So one more time over to EasyCAD, we'll get this wrapped up. Hopefully for the last time we're over here in EasyCAD, I'm gonna ungroup this last hatch pattern here. We're gonna delete the hatch and we're gonna get rid of our N and our B because we're happy with the way that that looks. And we're left with our K, the problem K right here. Uh, so we'll just hatch that K and we're gonna switch right back over to anodized aluminum and we're gonna do this one more time. So we're gonna mark it uh, with the anodized aluminum setting uh, with a little bit lower focus and then we're gonna do the steel white finish. Hopefully it matches the rest of the urn. So let's go find out. Now, once we're in this territory, guys, I like to light this up because as we come down, we just wanna make sure that we're not losing the K here. Uh, we don't want our red mark to shift too far off the K or we're gonna have ghosting. We're gonna have double lines and that's not gonna look good. Um, one thing that you can do to counteract that is I've brought the focus down a bit, so I'm just gonna hit the left key on my keyboard one time just to scoot that back over because as we come down and focus, uh, our our graphic is actually shifting to the right. So if we hit the left on the keyboard one time just to knock the K back over, it should center things back up. A lot of this stuff is done on instinct and intuition, so I just have a feeling this is gonna work out. So let's go ahead and mark that K. Perfect, and that looks really good. One more steel white finish and we can call it a day. And look at that guys. So we've effectively taken something that has gone way out of focus uh, and has been a big problem for us and uh, saved it. We really took this from a, a, a dumpster fire to a, uh, a salvageable engraving and I'm really happy with that. So lastly here guys, I am just gonna take our clean dry microfiber cloth and we're just gonna wipe that off with the grain. Uh, no chemicals, no oils. We don't have to do anything weird or fancy with this. Uh, and that is looking really nice. So we can go ahead and pick this up and just give you a view of it here. Let me actually switch from the wide because it doesn't give the same kind of focus. And you can't even tell we had those focal problems. Overall, I'd say that that was a, uh, a successful engraving there on this urn. 
Now, I did just wanna throw the macro on for a second here and show you this engraving. It looks really great when we look at it under the macro, but when we come over here to our K, uh, this here, this is what we call ghosting, okay? And what it is, is it's a double line because we've adjusted our focus. And when we adjust our focus, we change the size of our letter and we change the position of our letter. And if we're not careful with this, it's going to cause problems. Uh, you really just wanna be careful when you're doing live focus, and this is the reason why. If we swing way over here to our B, we can see this was a live focus that was done responsibly. There's barely any ghosting at all, uh, and that's, that's looking really clean and nice. But when we come back over here to our K again, you can see uh, that ghosting there, and that, um, you know, that's not what we want. Uh, we wanna put out better work than that. And again, in this situation, I think we're gonna be okay, but uh, in the long term, that's, you know, where we really want to practice and hone our craft so that we avoid this in the future. Um, because the customer, uh, you know, if they notice that, they're, they're not going to be super pleased with it. Um, and I'm not pleased with it. Uh, I want to put out better work than this. So, uh, again, keep an eye out for that ghosting, guys, and uh, do your live focusing responsibly. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you got something out of it. I hope you learned from my mistakes. Uh, that K was a close call, but we were able to rectify it. And I know the customer and knowing the customer, I think that they're gonna be super happy with the result, even if things didn't go exactly as planned. Uh, we still got a beautiful mark on there. They needed this in a day, so we only had a day to work on it. Uh, and, and I think that um, overall, we have a nice mark, but uh, again, you just really want to be careful with that live focusing because it can be dangerous and it has ruined projects for me in the past. So while it's a helpful skill to practice and learn, uh, it's something you do really want to be super careful of. With that said, that's the end of the video. That's all I've got today. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Hit that like button. If you really like the video, go ahead and hit subscribe. And don't forget to click the bell notification icon so that you get notified the next time that we post a video. If you're looking for even more ways to sink your teeth into laser everything, go ahead and check out the Patreon. We've got our first Patreon live stream coming up on July 3rd. We're gonna do live demos. Uh, people are gonna ask questions. And the $8 a month Patreon tier gets to watch it live and participate in that way. Uh, if you don't want to do that, don't worry. The regular live stream is still going to be uploaded as a regular YouTube video a week later. So you'll still be able to check that out and get in on all of that extra knowledge. Uh, the $4 a month Patreon tier now includes access to exclusive bonus posts where I talk a little bit more about the business end of what's going on in the laser shop, uh, what you can do to start your own. And I'm going to start really focusing on that to make sure that I can give you guys a lot of value in that way too. Anyway, that's it guys. I'd say that's all I've got for today, but I'm actually gonna stop shooting this video and jump right into shooting the next one. So I'm gonna have that one out for you guys super soon. Uh, but I hope you got value out of this video. Thanks so much for stopping by. We'll see you in the next one. Later.